changes in the vertical position and separation of the wing sets, optimized thrust line relative to center of mass, drastically reducing pitch tendencies and allowing for easy, conventional takeoff. Narrowing the distance between the sets longitudinally substantially reduces shaking compared to previous models, no longer requiring the use of counterweights. Distinct from previous models, the Mariposa is well suited to operation at most blade angles and throttle settings. The steep angle set by default is recommended for takeoff and steep climbs, while the shallower angle adopted here better suits cruise and landing. Shallow angles increase speed by roughly 10 knots. Owing to the reduction in shake, the Mariposa is the first of my ornithopters to be safely and easily walkable while in flight. I've said before that I am no expert in Stormworks art or decoration, but I hope this modest effort will prove suitably comfy to make use of this improvement. While it doesn't quite have the climb performance of the broader-winged Albatross, the Mariposa offers improved maneuverability, stability, and predictability, and makes much better use of the unique advantages afforded by the ornithopter configuration. You may even find a little utility for it. The Mariposa is diesel-electric, offering a roughly 60km range without the operation of its generator. Operating the generator, which is accessible by the left nose hatch, or the console at the back right of the cockpit, extends this range considerably, but is not quite sufficient to charge the aircraft in flight at high throttle settings. The Mariposa introduces a new avionics feature, incidence bias. This alters the center, so to speak, of the wing pitch range to increase lift and drag, similar to flaps on a conventional aircraft. This effect is most pronounced at shallow blade angles and allows for short distance, high angle touchdowns similar to those used by small birds. Use of this feature involves somewhat complex yaw mixing in the wings. It is recommended to avoid major roll inputs at low throttle settings and high incidence bias, as this can result in spins. In some situations, particularly short fields, the takeoff phase may also benefit from the use of moderate incidence bias settings, this time paired with steep blade angles. Doing this reduces thrust, increases drag, and also raises the thrust line causing stronger nose-over tendencies. If the field is short enough, however, the increased lift may be worth it. If better performance is needed, it is often helpful to eliminate any added incidence bias once airborne, a procedure again broadly shared with the use of conventional flaps. While the exact change in wing stroke is difficult to observe from the exterior, this setting allows takeoff at considerably lower airspeeds. It may take some experimentation to find the best settings, but I recommend roughly 50% for short takeoffs. Once in cruise, the Mariposa is fairly easy to trim to straight and level flight. Hand flying the aircraft with good trim will produce the least shaking as it does not introduce noise to the elevator, but if desired, the simple dual access autopilot present aboard the Albatross is available again here. It is enabled by tapping the ALT and or NAV hold switches on the center monitor. The DMA display below provides the distance to the target waypoint in kilometers. Note that shallow angles and high incidence bias is recommended for short landings, but isn't strictly necessary when space is not a concern. Still, I'll use it again here to demonstrate some of its limitations. As stated earlier, yawn tendencies while using the feature can get a bit interesting. High incidence bias settings produce extreme adverse yaw, a condition in which an aircraft will attempt to yaw opposite the direction that it is rolling. This effect is more pronounced when flying at lower airspeeds and higher angles of attack. You can see here that I slipped the base to final turn pretty severely at low speed with high incidence bias, but counter the error by applying throttle and diving a little. After that, the landing proceeds normally, but if you would prefer to avoid finicky hand flying, I recommend low or zero incidence bias settings during landing. It is also worth noting that the incidence bias system introduces yaw mixing to the wing stroke to reduce the aforementioned adverse yaw to manageable levels, but this causes additional shake at high throttle settings, I believe due to shortage of physics ticks at high wing frequency. I do not recommend flying at high incidence bias and high throttle for long periods. Once on the ground, the Mariposa offers a few quality of life features. The headliner here is steerable landing gear, finally. 
and wing independent taxi motors to allow the aircraft to be taxied while keeping the wings in their lowest profile position, useful for fitting under hangar doors. Conceivably, this system could also be used to assist in takeoff, but I've not really tried it, and it isn't necessary. As stated, the Mariposa is diesel electric. The generator is accessible for both activation and refueling from the left side hatch. The aircraft can be directly charged from an electrical connector available here as well, or used to power other equipment. Cables and hoses are provided.